could be the greatest transfer of wealth in history. And you as a broker and agent are in the perfect freaking position to take advantage of it. You got the relationships, you got knowledge of the business. You see the deals as they come online. Take advantage of it for God's sakes. All right. Welcome to our next episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. Thank you for tuning in. I'm your host, Norman Kinsey. We have our co-host, Mr. Dan Gandy. Welcome, Dan. How's your day going, man? It's going. I'm not awesome, feeling the best, man. but we're we're here. I know. He made it. He made Gotta it. Show he made up. It. He made it for a great episode because the person we're bringing here today, we're very lucky to have him on the podcast. Before we got on air, he was giving us a lot of feedback because this individual is the host of the number one commercial real estate podcast, and he's absolutely crushing it. He did his research on us, and he gave us some feedback as we're growing our podcast as well, and one day we can be at his level. So we're very grateful for this <laughs> individual, and uh, today we're going to be talking about mindset. Not just mindset, but how did this person we have on the podcast go from making 50 and losing $50 million and and then how did he have the mindset to not lose it or lose it, but then bring it back, come back to where he's at now and even get further along? I mean, he's booked out so far ahead. He just had an amazing event with 700 people on his webinar. So this man is crushing it in the real estate sector. So go ahead and get your pens and pencils out. I want to thank Liftoff Agent for sponsoring the podcast. We want to bring the one and only... Welcome to a new episode of Real Estate First Technology, your number one resource to get the inside scoop from top performing real estate professionals. How are they growing their business utilizing technology in today's market? Hear also from top performing coaches that can help and serve you and your real estate business and also technology providers. Let's go deeper with the technology providers to ask them how they got where they're at today and how maybe their services could better serve your real estate business. A big shout out to Liftoff Agent for sponsoring our podcast. Go ahead and go to liftoffagent.com to learn about their marketing and positioning services to help scale your real estate business. If you haven't already done so, like the episode, subscribe. We want you to comment on YouTube what you learned from the episode and give us a review if you're going to be listening and streaming this podcast. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and enjoy this week's podcast of Real Estate First Technology. Rod on Real Estate First Technology. Welcome to the show, sir. We appreciate your time. Wow. I don't know how how that brain how that mouth works so fast. That brain must just even be twice as fast because I I even have a hard time tracking you. You you talk so fast, my friend. Well, thanks for having me here. Let's have some fun today and see if we can add some value, brother. Yeah, mo most most definitely. So, uh, you know, that's what the podcast is all about. It's about you, your business, what you're up to, mm -hmm. what you're doing. Um, and yeah, it's definitely. I think the energy comes from you, Rod. At the end of the day, having someone that is at your stature, I think anyone who's listening right now should definitely listen up and understand that. Uh, you know, they're in for a treat. So let's talk about your beginning. So where did sure. you start before you got into commercial real estate, before you made the $50 million to be at where you're at today? Um, in a nutshell, I guess, I'm sure you've answered this question lots of times to kind of condense it down. Sure. Well, let me give you a little background. Um, so, so I'm an immigrant. I was born in the Netherlands, Holland, you know, wooden shoes, windmills, good cheese. Um, immigrated oh, yeah. when I was six years old with my brother, Albert, my mother's Vancha. Um, we ended up in Denver, Colorado. And we didn't have much. Uh, I remember um, we uh, ate expired food because there was an expired food store, drank powdered milk with our cereal in the morning because it was cheaper than real milk. Wow. I remember wearing wearing clothes from the Goodwill and the Salvation Army all the way through junior high school till I finally lied about my age when I was 14 because I was tall at Burger King and, and started flipping burgers so that I could uh, buy my own clothes finally. And, you know, um, I, I, I'm sure you've got listeners that had it harder than I did, or maybe even have it harder now with all the craziness going on. But yeah. I knew I wanted more. And luckily, my mom had an incredible work ethic. Um, so she work ethic. <laughs> so she uh, babysat kids. So we'd have enough money to eat. And she was a bit of an entrepreneur with her babysitting money. She actually invested in the stock market and IPO successfully with no formal education and then also invested in real estate. Well, her first real estate acquisition was the house right across the street from us when I was 14. She bought for about 30 grand. And then when I was 17, she told me she'd made $20,000 in her sleep that had gone up in value 20,000. I'm wow. like, what? You made 20, and this is when 20 grand was a lot of money. Okay. Yeah. This is 1977. And, you know, I'm, I'm like, you made 20 grand. You didn't do anything. Screw college. I'm getting into real estate. So I went out and I got my real estate broker's license literally right when I turned 18, which I was telling you guys before we started recording, you could do that back then with education. Now they got smart. You need some experience before you can be a broker and have your own office. But I was a broker. Well, I was still living at home. My first year in real estate, I made about eight grand. Okay. My second year, maybe 10 grand. But my third year, I made over $100,000, which back in 1980 was some serious change. And so what happened between year two and three that caused me to 10x my income? Well, what happened was I met a guy 
that taught me about the importance of mindset and psychology. I was, he was another broker. I was smart enough to go work for another broker. I was dating his daughter actually. And, and, um, so, uh, and really how 80 to 90% of your success in anything is your mindset and your psychology. Only 10 to 20% is the stuff we talk about on our podcast, you know, the technical stuff. I yeah. teach multifamily real estate, but, uh, you know, you know that's that's the smallest part of it. You, have to actually, you actually have to take action with what you learn and what you know, you know, push through fear, push through limiting beliefs, uh, you know, maybe get uncomfortable. Um, so fast forward to today, I've owned a couple thousand houses that I've rented long term in three states. Um, and, uh, in 2006, my net worth went up $17 million while I slept. Wow. And you, and you might say, wow, you did say, wow. And I said, wow. And I got a head so freaking big. I could barely fit it through a door. I thought I was a real estate <laughs> God. And you know, when that happens, God of the universe, whatever you believe in, they give you a nice little smack. Well, that was 2008. I lost $50 million conservatively in 2008. And so, wow. you know, what I'm known for talking about at my on my podcast and at my boot camps is really the mindset it took to have $50 million to lose in the first place. But then as important, maybe even more important, the mindset it took to recover from that to get back to the success I'm, I am blessed to have today. So happy to wow. drill down on that some more if you like. Well, no, I absolutely love that. And um, I have a few questions and we'll get to Dan on the mix-up round and he'll go deeper on some things. But um, the mindset, I think it's so important. At, at the end of the day, it's you're going through the process, you're growing, you're, you're building, you have people around your family, friends, loved ones, and they don't quite understand as you're going through that process. And then from there, it's like, yeah, the ego. I think a lot of people need <laughs> to understand and check that ego at the door because at the end of the day, we all, uh, you know, shit, eat, sleep the same, and we're all the same. It's just the mindset, I think, is different and um, and the skill set it takes to get the mindset because the powers and be doesn't give that to us. And so I love the fact that you have the boot camp and you're doing what you're doing, Rod, to serve and support and show people, like, this is the roadmap. This is what I've done, you know, follow the process. And then you can have the same success that I've had. So let's, for me, like, let's talk about, like, what was the biggest thing for you, for anyone who's listening and they're starting to have success in their business and 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 their 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 thought process is me or their thought process like is ego or they want to get the Ferrari or Lamborghini or the watch that you have. Got to say, I admire the watch that you have, uh, Rod. <laughs> you know, what would you say to them as far as like checking the ego at the door, right? And, and just, you know, being more, I don't know, I guess you say humble? Well, you've said a lot of things. Um, and you know, I'm past, I, I, I have had the Lamborghini and I've had the, you know, uh, you know, $8 million mansion on the beach. And, and yes, I still love my watches. I have about a half a million dollars worth of watches, which is by most standards, not that big a deal, but yeah, yeah I do love those. In fact, I'm going to Vegas here in about a month and I'll probably buy another one, but, uh, Congrats. but you know, it, it, it really, the bottom line is you've got, and I'm going to tell you, you're, if you're an agent and you're listening to this or a broker, uh, we're headed for some freaking pain. There's going to be, frankly, a shit storm coming. And, and so, but with that comes incredible opportunity. With crisis comes opportunity. And you as an agent or a broker in the perfect freaking position to capitalize on it because you've got connections. But, you know, here's the sad reality. Most agents and brokers are only as good as their, their next commission. And if they, you know, they every January 1st, they go back to work you should start buying some freaking assets. Okay. Start buying some real estate if you're not already, because if you do that at some point, you don't have to work anymore. And I know as an agent or broker, I know EXP, I saw your hat there. Dan has a fantastic program. I actually went to one of their conferences in Houston. Was one of my students was trying to get me on board. And I just realized it was just too much work. I couldn't do it. Um, but but the point is, it's a great model. I, I love the freaking model. I love what they're about. Um, and they've got some sort, you know, a bit of a retirement plan. But the bottom line is, you know, an agent or a broker is in the perfect position to build incredible wealth if they if they get out of comfort, you know, and push through fear. And it starts, I'm going to tell you, it starts with creating a, you know, a burning desire, like Napoleon Hill talks about in his book, Think and Grow Rich, you really got to want something. And so if it's the Lamborghini, fine, use that. You know, yeah. if it's the house on the beach, use that. If it's the watches, whatever, you know, you got to figure out what it is you want and why you want it. If you come to one of my boot camps, the first hour, hour and a half, is goal setting on steroids. Because how the hell do you get anything if you don't know what it is? You got to know what it is you want and why you want it. And so, by the way, uh, if you're not interested in buying, learning multifamily, go to rodslinks.com. And at the bottom is my goal setting workshop. I did it on New Year's Day. I do it every year on New Year's. It's free. There's a guide you can download. You know, here's the sad reality, guys. People spend more time spend uh, planning a freaking birthday party than they do designing their lives. Okay. This is designing your life. So if you go to Rod's links and go to the bottom, I'm not going to try to sell you anything. Just watch that. If you have your spouse, watch it. If your kids are over 10 years old, have them do it. 
because, you know, have them get started on, on recognizing and focusing on the things that you want. And you should do it as well, because I'm going to tell you, there's going to be a lot of fear coming over the next couple of years. I, I don't know when this will air, but we're, we're approaching the midterms. And I think after the midterms, the news is going to get really ugly. You know, there's a big influence from the left on the media and i think they're about to lose real big and when they do i think the news is just going to get really ugly to try to make the the right look bad and forget the politics of it i just the reason i bring that up is because it's fear is going to be pervasive and i just want to remind you of warren buffett's famous quote be fearful when others are greedy been a lot of greed the last few years okay but the second part of that quote is be greedy when others are fearful so but the key to be, you know being able to capitalize on what's coming is to be focused on what you want not what you don't want because whatever you focus on gets bigger and if you get sucked in all the crap on the news which is primarily crap you know that's going to get bigger and yep. and 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 so you know i for example they asked mother teresa if she was anti-war she said no i'm pro-peace i mean it's kind of a play on words but you get it you know i get students that call me well not students they know better but i get people out on uh, call me up cold and say hey i need to get out of student loan debt and i'm right i'm like wrong statement you need to make so much freaking money that debt's irrelevant again Ooh. again it's that focus okay and so in what's coming you know if you're watching this or listening to this show you're a leader and for, right now, the world needs freaking leaders more than ever. But as a leader, you've got to manage your focus. So keep the crap out. Stand guard at the door to your mind. Bring in the good stuff. Um, you know, on my podcast, I do these clips every week called Own Your Power. And, you know, I just did one on the power of perseverance. Every, and there's hundreds of them there. I'm really proud of them. They're with music. They're, you give me five minutes a week, I will juice your ass. Okay. So just, <laughs> you know, that's 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 the truth of it. Uh, my podcast is called Lifetime Cash Flow Through Real Estate Investing. And, and it's on that rodslinks.com. That's my link tree. It's got tons of free resources there. But do the goal setting, for God's sakes, because... In what's coming, you've got to be focused on what you want, not what you don't want. So the, the fear doesn't overtake you and you can capitalize on 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 this incredible opportunity that's in front of us. Um, so, you know, it starts with that burning desire and that hunger. And I can continue down, you know, talking about some of the other strategies or you can ask me questions, whatever you want to do. Wow, that, that's yeah. amazing. I think I think the question I have and, and that mindset is everything, you know, I love what you said as far as, you know, where your attention goes, energy flows. And and to make sure you're expanding on what you want, not what you don't want. I had a conversation with my wife yesterday about some things because uh got some things happening behind the scenes. And you know, today you put some things in perspective for us here at Real Estate First Technology Scale. Um, what is your why, Rod? Like this is the last question for going to like the mix-up round. Like, why are you doing what you're doing at the scale that you're doing it at? Okay. You can you can't really see, you guys listening can't see this, but I'm showing the guys behind my green screen the whole you can't even see behind it, but the whole wall is covered with hundreds of thank you cards. I don't know if you guys wow. can see those. OK, yes. yep. um, you know, I'm past the whole needing to prove myself to the world that I'm good enough because, you know, when I immigrated this country, um, I got thrown into school. And I found out what bullies were for the first time. And, you know, and then my mom, proud Dutch woman that she just thought it'd be a great idea to send me to school in wooden shoes and those leather shorts the Germans wear for Oktoberfest. So I got my ass kicked again. And then they chased me home and she chased them off with a fly swatter next day, ass kicking. And so I came up with this belief system that I wasn't good enough. And I'm going to tell you, a lot of people have this belief systems. I'm not good enough, smart enough, strong enough, have enough time, have enough money, have enough. I'm not analytical enough. And just here's what I want to remind you of. There's a reason the acronym for belief systems is BS. Because they are BS. But you, but again, that hunger is how you push through the BS, how you push through the fear. Or maybe you're comfortable. Comfort zone's a nice warm place and nothing freaking grows there, right? So you got to have that hunger to push through it. My why, I, 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 I love changing lives. I literally, I get, literally, I get love every single day. Yesterday, I had a student. My, my students are called warriors. My war, I've been teaching five years. They now own well over 100,000 units that we know of, okay? I'm super proud of that. Next to my kids, I'm, that's the thing I'm most proud of. But, you know, I love changing lives. And I know that sounds like hyperbole and blah, 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 guru shit, but it's not. OK, I, I mean, I literally get love typically five to 10 times a day. Like, wow. like I said, yesterday, one of my warriors retired from his W-2 job. I've had tons of them that have done that. And they posted in our Facebook group. And you saw the cards behind me. I get I get a DM, email, cards, gifts literally every day, every day. And and so that's my why. And and of course, my my I have a supermodel, beautiful wife. She's a why as well. Yeah, I see her. You know, thank you. Yeah. So so, you know. Um, that, that, those are wise as well. Um, a big why. Um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, there you go. Dude, that was just phenomenal, Rod. <laughs> I, I have to say, 
you know, they say people forget what you're saying dead, but they won't forget the way you made them feel. And I get mm-hmm. money's great and congratulations. And I want to say hats off to you and all the success and the money you made and all the doors. But the one thing that I feel like that's going to be above all is that the fact that every single life that you touched, they will never forget you. That's your legacy. When you're one day set and gone, those people that are thanking you every single day for every single listener and viewer out there to go bigger for like what they're doing and help more and serve more and philanthropy or serve the community or whatever. It's more than just how many doors you have. It's more than how much money you make. Cause at the end of the day, people forget you said and did, but they will forget the way you made them feel and what, the way you impacted yeah. their lives. And, and, and I'll tell you, life is about contribution. Amen. I'll tell you a quick story. I don't know. Are we out of time? Cause you, uh, you're pushing us pretty quick. Are we out of time? Cause we're I, good. I, we have at least 30 minutes. So we're okay, good. Okay. Well, let, let me share a story then, because I think, I think it'll resonate with your listeners. So, you know, I, I, uh, one of the goals that I had for 20 years was to build a house on the beach. Okay. I taught, I mentioned it was, I, I built this, it, it took me 20 years, but I built this $8 million, 10,000 square foot mansion on the beach. I owned the beach on one side. I had my boats on the backside. It was a, called a Gulf to wow. Bay. It was a slice through an Island, which was unthinkable when I was 18. So when you do your goals, take the lid off your freaking brain and just write it. If you, if it even a possibility that you think it's possible, write it down. Even if you don't think it's possible, write it down. But anyway, I I built this place and just to describe it, I mean, it had a giant uh, wide waterfall from the second floor balcony into the pool, pools and magazines, um, big spiral staircase up through the middle of the house with wrought iron carved stair rails, elevator, wine cellar. On the second floor, I had aquariums built that that wrapped around the staircase. It cost me almost 200 grand. So this gives you an idea of the house. Wow. So two months after I moved in, I'm floating up at the uh, floating in the pool at night. My family's inside sleeping. I'm looking up at this testament to my ego, which is really what it was. It was to prove to the world I was good enough. Okay, yeah. uh, and 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 I got depressed, and I don't mean a little depressed. I mean I was really freaking bummed. I'm like, what the hell? I've just cheat. Che- I had the Maserati in the garage, the two Mercedes, the boats, the jet skis, all this stupid crap I thought was important. Beautiful family, incredible home. And, and I realized there were several things going on and there's a message in this. So hang with me here. So the first thing is, you know, you should never achieve a big goal without having other goals lined up behind it. You know, like the good book says, without a vision, the people perish, you need a vision for the future. So that's why the goals are so important that you continually do them. Um, The second thing is it's never about the goals. You know, they say the happiest days of a boat owner's life are the day they buy the boat and the day they sell the boat, right? It's, but it's about who you become on your path to the goals and happiness comes from progress and growth. It never comes from the goals. You've got to continually be progressing. So that's the second piece. But the third piece was I was totally focused on me. Rod, 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 show the world I matter, show the world I'm good enough. And that's the, you know, when I got depressed, I went out and bought some books. And one of them was Tony Robbins book. And and I'm like, man, I really like this stuff. And so I went and saw him live. This is 22 years ago. And I found out that he fed families for the holidays. And I'm like, you know, what a concept, do something for someone else. I'm embarrassed to say I had to be 40 to get that memo. So I went home, I called my brother. I said, bro, let's let's feed five families. I was going to see him in Denver for Thanksgiving. And so he called his church, found out he really needed help. We had a lot of fun shopping and we bought toys for the kids if they had them and frozen turkeys and all kinds of stuff. And the third family changed my life. We get, get up to this really crappy one bedroom. It wasn't even a one bedroom it was because you had to walk through it to get to the kitchen. A woman there with five kids. She wow. comes out, she sees all this stuff on the porch, the food and the toys, and she starts crying. And her older, her kids come out, the older ones started crying. And I started crying and I was hooked. And I'm, in, I'm, I'm blessed to say in the last 12, I'm sorry, in the last 22 years, we have fed over 135,000 children here in Sarasota and Bradenton. We've wow. done tens of thousands of backpacks filled with school supplies to local kids. We've did, did, just did 1500 a couple months ago, um, tens of thousands of teddy bears to the local police departments for their officers to keep in their vehicles. If they encounter a child that's been traumatized. And I don't say this to brag here. Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. See, we've been taught to achieve, 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 to be happy. Like we can't be happy until we've achieved. Right. But I'm going to tell you, if you give back in any fashion, you're happily achieving. And I know it's a play on words, but it's an important one. Okay. Again, Tony Robbins calls it the science of achievement versus the art of fulfillment. Achievement's a science. You want to learn multifamily? I've got a boot camp coming up the end of January. Get your butt there. It's $97. I don't sell anything. Two days of training, nothing being sold. And I'll give you the blueprint to go kick ass in the multifamily business. Okay. But fulfillment. So that's a science. Okay. You just have to go do it. Okay. I'll tell you what to do. You just have to go do it. That's a science. It's, It's a proven formula. But fulfillment is an art. You got to figure out what juices you, okay? You know, for me, it's kids. Maybe for you, it's animals or the environment or the elderly, whatever it is. 
give back right freaking now. Now, I know if you're listening and you've got blood dripping from your teeth and you want the Lambo and the, and the watch and all that, and you're saying, yeah, I'll do it when I have money. No, do it right freaking now, even if it's just your time. Why? Because the money will come faster. It's the way the God of the universe works. Trust me on this, okay? Now, you don't do it for that reason, but that's just how it works. So figure out what's going to juice you, give back right now, and success is inevitable. You know, I did a, just one last piece. I did a, uh, I had a big boot camp in Denver uh, a couple of months ago. I had 800 people there. And I did awards from for 10 of my warriors. We started this process called the Hall of Fame. And there were 10 warriors, these my students that were there. And we did a slide for each one of them. And, and then we gave them an award and stuff. It was really cool. And I saw a pattern. Every single one of them does something charitable, build schools, raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for veterans affairs, sexual human trafficking, all that shit. I, literally, er, all, every one of them does something charitable. So that's a clue, my friends. These are my top students um, that you know own thousands and thousands of doors um, give back. So anyway, I just wanted to wow. make sure I got that out before we you know, wrap things up if we, you know, wherever we are. In yeah. This. Um, I know we have a, I have a little bit of time to go over. I don't know if you and Dan have a little time to go over or not. I know Dan's not feeling whole that well, but we'd love for Dan to take off the, the mix up round. So he has the mix up round and yeah. the last question yeah. or two. Take it away. We'll no, take it up. away. I'm in no rut. I've got, I've got 30 minutes, but take okay. it away. Whatever you need. Cool. Awesome. Go ahead, Dan, take it away. Hey, thanks Norm. I think the, the biggest brass tax and let's back up. Cause we talked a lot about mindset, which is, key to all of this, but I think one of the missing pieces from this conversation is how a real estate agent goes from commissions to investments. Yeah. Um, and I think- uh, It's called education. Being- it's called education, 100%. man. That's it. Okay. Let, you know, I mentioned, if, sorry to interrupt you, but I, I mentioned my boot camp. Let me just throw it out there real quick because, I mean- it's $97 and I don't sell anything there. And it and it's drinking through a freaking fire hose. It's not like I'm going to tease you and try to upsell you. None of that crap. Okay. Uh, and so text my name, Rod, to 72345 or go to multifamilybootcamp.com. Again, text Rod to 72345. If the price goes up, it'll go up to about 400 bucks. Just let me know. You saw, you heard me or saw me, you know, on Dan and Norm's show here. And I'll, I'll just DM me on any social channel. If you go to Rod's links, you'll see all my social channels. DM me, I'll get you that $97 price, no issue. But again, I don't sell anything there and it's every aspect of the business. So if it's if you think your vehicle is going to be multifamily, get up to speed as fast as you can. Start listening to my podcast as well. Get up to speed as fast as you can. Now, if it's single family, then get up to speed on that as fast as you can. If it's a different asset class, retail, office, industrial, get up to speed. Because once this thing really crashes and it's coming, OK, I mean, it's coming up. Trust me, it's going to be some some pain in this country. Once that happens, if you're trying to learn it, then it's going to be too late. You need to learn it right now. So pick your vehicle, you know, and 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 get up to speed as fast as you can. So I'm sorry I interrupted you, but that's the answer. No. OK, no, that's good. It's, it's <laughs> education. Um, as somebody who I've bought a million dollars in real estate every single year, I've been a broker and nice. I look I look at the education part as the most important, but also the the opportunities, the relationships, how do you, how do you instruct your agent, you know, students? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is it other, is it OPM or is it using? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much money looking for a home that got killed in the stock market. We won't even talk about crypto. I've seen crypto millionaires crying on social media. No, (laughs) there's so much money looking for a home that's not getting decent returns. And, you know, like multifamily, incredibly resilient, safe conservative asset class it's bought right of course but uh you know but but you 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 uh you, you can raise money for your deals i don't know about you but i'll take 50 percent of something over 100 percent of nothing any day so That's so give up half the deal or whatever when i was in my 20s i bought millions of dollars worth of property 50 50 with partners they put up the money i did all the work i found them i fixed them i managed them i sold them everybody was happy and i didn't have any money in them you know, uh, they even signed on debt. So that's what's possible. But, you know, you've got to be educated enough. You've got to be competent. OK, it starts with competence. Then that equates to confidence, which would then equate to your ability to influence people. But it starts with competence. You've got because you've got to ha- you're not going to BS your way to give some, have somebody give you hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars. Like I just raised 19 million for a deal we closed on last week in Nashville. And, and it starts with that competence, then the competence, and then you can influence people to invest with you. But there's a lot of money looking for a home and there always will be. It's going to be a little harder because people are going to be afraid. But, you know, I've got I'm in a lot of cash right now because cash is king in a crisis and it's killing me because the inflation's killing. It, you know, and then these idiots print another trillion to do student loan debt. Don't get me started. But the <laughs> point is, you know, it, it's it's uh, 
it, it's going to be ugly for a while, guys. I mean, there are 20 million families in this country behind on their utility bills. You know, I owned a foreclosure support company right after I lost everything, and, and we helped thousands of families save their homes. And I sold it a few years ago, and I had lunch with the guy that bought it from me a couple of weeks ago, and he said, it's like a freaking tsunami of foreclosures coming. So if you're a realtor, learn short sales, learn how to do workouts right away, because there's going to be a ton of them. I mean, you know, they had that foreclosure moratorium and they had, with the eviction moratorium. Well, those foreclosures are now starting to hit, and there's tons of them. Um, so, yeah. you know, we're, we're headed for some pain, guys. And so- but again, it could be the greatest transfer of wealth in history. And you as a broker and agent are in the perfect freaking position to take advantage of it. you got the relationships. You've got knowledge of the business. You see the deals as they come online. Take advantage of it, for God's sakes. Yeah, I think that was, you know, that education piece. And I think uh, having the mentality of being an asset manager, if you want to use other people's money to invest, you better yeah. be the best asset manager possible. And I think Don't that's dabble. what- don't doubt. Yeah, yeah. I think that's that's huge because when I used to work in syndication, I've seen a lot of bad things go wrong. People get sued. Investors go belly up. Right. Sure. S no, SEC. we're going to see a lot of that coming because a lot of new operators never been through a crash. Don't know how to asset management. Don't even know what a KPI means. You know, and and you know a lot of bridge debt used these last couple of years. And these guys, there's going to be some problems. So I was looking at a deal in San Antonio, and the guy's reserves. His bridge debt's coming due went from eight thousand a month to eighty thousand a month. Okay, do you think wow. that's put a cramp in somebody's style? Yeah, and there's a lot of that. So you know, again, yeah. opportunity. It's going to be some pain. Hey, listen, I lost fifty million. I got past it. You can get past it too if you you know if you if you're in that position. Just keep keep your eye focused on the goal and move forward. Wow, awesome, awesome. Back to norm. Thank you, man. That was huge. I got to say, hats off. Everyone was listening. Look how Rod takes advantage of opportunity. I understand that he, he he like Dan had the question. He already had the answer. He already had the freaking solution. Go to this yeah. link, make it happen. Links are down below for Rod. So you have everything there. So you'd be good to go. Um, so just that's the recap for the, the mix up round. One or two last questions. We'll leave the yeah, floor open to you time. if you go ahead and leave anything yeah. for our viewers and listeners. So yeah. it sounds like after going through what you've gone through to where you're at now, it sounds like the passion behind you now is just to help more people thrive, help feed more families. I mean, it's it addictive, like man. It's addictive. When you get that kind of love, it just is. You know, I I work way too much though, and 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 my wife puts up with me working on Sundays. And and again, if you saw her, you'd see the big mistake I'm making there. But it becomes addictive. So, yeah. Wow, yeah. that that's amazing. So I guess the last question for me, completely off of anything business courses, anything related on that side. What do you do for fun, man? I, I know you say you work. Too oh, much, I love to, I love to fish. I love to go to the beach. I was just on the beach a couple of days ago. Um, uh, post a little video. I show off my wife, and then I post a video. That's me just. Uh, I see showing that. her off because she's so gorgeous. But um, um, no, I, I love to travel. That's probably my biggest thing. Uh, love it, and I need to do more of it. And and that's what I'm. You know, I'm starting to look at life through a lifestyle filter instead of, you know, just balls to the wall. Um, but. Uh, yeah, you know, life is meant to be happy and to and to to find love and to give love. And you know, the bottom line is, whatever you want, you have to give. You want happiness, you give happiness. You want love, you give love. Um, you know, you want financial uh, success, you have to give up your time and 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 money as well. Um, so, um, wow, I didn't really answer your question, but <laughs> well, no, you did. Side <laughs> <robots>. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. That's great. Well, we're at this part of the show now where we love to open up the floor to you. You know, what, what do you like our viewers and listeners to take as we now, you know, put bookends on our episode today sure. that they can apply to the business and have more massive success? You said a lot of things. There's already call to actions, but take it away as we have. Yeah, no, show. I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up. I mean, the bottom line is as an agent or a broker, please take advantage of what's coming. Don't, don't, don't get, you know, cause I'm going to tell you, your sales are going to suffer. Your commissions are going to suffer. No question. But if you learn this business so you can invest properly and not make mistakes and, and, and reach out to the people, you know, that have money to invest with you and say, Hey, listen, we're going to take advantage of what's coming. Right. So, you know, when quote unquote, the blood's running in the streets, don't be afraid. Cause that's when we pounce. And I hate that analogy, but that's the best one. And so, you know, and, and so get educated on whatever vehicle you're you're going to use okay and and i don't even care if it's with me but if it you know learn the bit learn what you want to use to invest to take advantage of what's coming so that's number one number two stay focused on what you want do my goal setting or do your own goal setting and stay focused on what you want 
uh, not what you don't want because pain, you know, the, the pain and the negativity is going to be pervasive uh, here soon. Um, and, uh, and then just take massive freaking action. Just go make it happen. That's it. Bottom line. Wow. Woo. I love it. This was one for the history books for sure. Yep. Rod, thank you so much for, uh, pleasure, for everything guys. that you've done to shine light and to give us an opportunity. Um, as you know, we've been doing this podcast for a couple of years and interviewed about 180 individuals and um, there's always room to grow. So Rod gave us some good feedback before we went on air here. Yep. So thank you yet again. Dan, thanks so much for co-hosting. Thank you guys. Thanks for bearing with me. I am and, not feeling good. Yeah, man. <laughs> but we, I'm here, buddy. Hope you feel better, man. We hope you feel Appreciate better. It. And for our viewers and listeners, here's going to be a prime example of taking massive action. Rod said before we got on the air, encourage everyone to like the episode, subscribe. And one thing we've never done is ask anyone to leave us a review. We thought we were leading by example by having amazing guests on the show. That's not enough. So please take massive action. Go get Rod's course. Check the links down below. Like, follow, subscribe. Primarily one video, but we also have this streaming as far as, far as the audio as well. And we appreciate your time. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching Real Estate vs. Technology, this week's brand new episode and making it to the end, your real one. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified for new episodes that come out every single week on Fridays at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Also, if you comment on this episode and you like the episode, you'll help this episode get out to more individuals. And if you want to join our Facebook group page, just click a link. It's a Facebook icon on our profile page here on our YouTube channel. Join Join our group page, network with individuals all across the world, and share what technology you're using to grow your business. The next link is to join our Real Estate vs. Technology brand new IG or Instagram page. If you go on any of our stories, you can see who's going to be on Real Estate vs. Technology before it actually goes live on our YouTube channel. And the last link would be if you want to be on an episode of Real Estate vs. Technology. You pick a date and a time, we'll deep dive into your story and technology you're using to share that with other individuals that view our episodes weekly to inspire, enlighten, show up, and show out for people that love to watch these type of podcasts to have more success in their own business. Thank you so much for your continued support. We appreciate it. We will see you on the next one.